stem mastering is something which is very, very connected to the politics of the project before it gets to you. It's a combination of the relationship with the mixer to the mastering guy, but then of the mixer also to whoever his client was, be it the band or the producer, or if he is the producer, then the band or whatever. It, to, to come into a mastering session with stems introduces a, a certain uh, vulnerability uh, by the creative person. Just break down your mix into categories. Say, so you got your drums on one stem, you got your bass on another stem, you got your background vocals on another stem, you got vocals on another stem. Uh, let's go keyboards, you know, uh, horns, whatever, uh, synths. Okay. Now, each one of those stems, everything can be broken out with a D to A converter into the dangerous box, right? And then that box outputs to stereo. So immediately, there's an enhancement that comes from having less information kind of jumbled, jumbled together inside the desk of the of Pro Tools. At that point, now I have the mix, and I have the elements, and I also have an analog output of each of the elements. So, for example, a singer who has a very, very kind of high, scratchy voice who used a very bright microphone, now I want, to, I want to enhance that vocal and I'm, I'm able to use an analog equalizer and add some, some richness or an analog compressor to, to handle the peaks, you know, particularly with vocals, but also tremendous help with bass because you can handle bass and bass drum separately. Okay, the usual mastering dynamic. I've done my work and you sonically enhance it to make it better. That, that's, one, that's one level. Now the next level of stems is I've done my work, but I don't really know what the relationship should be between the elements in the, on these stems, which could be guitars, drums, bass, vocals, and whatever, keyboards, uh, synths, uh, reverbs, or whatever. Okay, now somebody that comes in with that feeling in their production, is coming in really kind of naked in terms of like, well, have I done a good job or not? So that's why I think that 90% of the time, that 95% of the time, it's not a good thing for a producer or an engineer to project that, that vulnerability. However, if the situation in the record has been such that there's been so many elements in the mix because of the budget, because of the geographical location of the, of the, uh, of the musicians. Okay, we had to do the guitars in, in Wyoming, and then we went to a studio in Miami to do the drums and blah, 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 and there's been this whole hodgepodge of things so that everybody in that project is off balance to begin with. Perfect opportunity to come in with stems and let somebody outside the project evaluate it and have the ability to balance it a little bit. Anything that gets to, to the goal line, to me, is always, I'm, I'm happy to help. And that was one thing with the Dangerous Box, that we're able to really get a good result from the stems. Now, that being said, once we started talking about this idea three or four years ago, a lot of people started to set up their, their home studios so that they were actually doing the same thing before it got here. So, you know, it's kind of a, like a hybrid, like the, the mastering kind of spill over into the mix, or the mix spilling over to the mastering. You know, we all really do the same thing.